Yes, hello, welcome into Living in Sports here for the One Season Challenge of Sheffield United. We're on the last episode today, so leave a like for that. Come on, I hope you've enjoyed the series. Subscribe to the channel as well if you're looking forward to more One Season Challenges because they are coming up, don't you worry. I've started this, I'm enjoying it. We're going to continue or we'll work our way around some different teams for One Season Challenges. But before we worry about any of those future series let's finish this one with a bang and try and get some european football with sheffield united here and you can see on the screen in front of you the results that happened on the tuesday night we play our game on the wednesday but the tuesday night games wolves lost to aston villa west ham drew with tottenham and that means that we have got a game in hand on the teams that we are competing with for these european spaces or places spaces the same thing aren't they and if we win today we will go up into seventh we know our destiny is in our hands. If we win the last three games, we will get into sixth position. It's as simple as that. Because if we win this game, we go a point behind Wolves. One of our last games is against Wolves. So if we beat them, they can't get three points in that game as well. So we'd go above them and we'd finish sixth. And that was a fairly successful season for Sheffield United. However, if we start dropping points, it's not down to us anymore. We'll need to see what happens. But I'm not going to talk about dropping points. We already dropped enough points in the last episode where we drew against Southampton and West Brom who are down in the relegation battle. Not good at all. But today we play against two teams who are in the relegation battle. Brighton is our first opponent. We play Burnley the last game of the season. They're already relegated. And we also play Wolves in between those two. So we need to get a win today against Brighton. It's as simple as that. We are at home against Brighton. We've got a win. Come on. We're 20 points ahead of them in the league. No excuses. Doesn't matter that we have some injuries. Go and get the win. We're continuing on from where we were the last time because we've not had any games in between. So don't worry, you've not missed anything if you watched the last episode. If you didn't go and watch the last episode, go and look at it because those games are very frustrating. You'll see me getting frustrated in the sideline. Not a common occurrence in this series so far. It's been fairly successful, to be honest. But this is a team we're going to go with up against Brighton. Ramsdale in goal. Egan, O'Connell and Chambers at the back. Brian and Baldock as the wing-backs. Ampadu, Norwood and Osborne in midfield with Brewster and McBurney up front. Basically, the team picks itself because we still have all these injuries and suspensions down here. Hopefully, those boys can come back in. If not for the game against Wolves, then definitely the last game of the season and get them all back and, you know, win. Because <laughs> the last episode we didn't win a game and we're playing against 19th and 18th. And it just simply wasn't good enough. We also have so few people in the squad that are fit at the moment. We can't name all nine subs on the bench, which is not ideal for us at all. I'm going to go out and say I expect a win tonight and nobody cares at all. In, uh, in that dressing room, so that's ideal. Brighton wearing their blue, us wearing our red and white stripes. As always, you've seen me wearing this the whole time through this series. Our good luck kit, it would appear. And the first highlight of the game looks like it's going to come from a Brighton throw, but we have recovered the ball. O'Connell with it, switches it over to Egan, who gives it back to Brian down this left-hand side. Can he get the ball in? No, he plays it back to Ampadu, who's moved forward from defence to midfield to cover for the injuries. Osborne, who's only playing because of the injuries to Berg and Fleck. Norwood out to Brian. Will he swing this ball into the box? Yes, he will. Baldock hits it from a long way out. Oh, well, it's a goal. Baldock, who had not scored this season before last episode, scored a thunderous effort from the edge of the box in the last episode, and he scored his second of the season here. One wing back to the other. Baldock hits it. Blocked by the defender. The keeper had already dived. So Baldock gets to put it into an empty goal. And we win the game 1-0. Win the game 1-0? That's not at all right. We are leading the game 1-0. I hope that wasn't a Freudian slip there. The ball swung in by Brighton. And they have punished me saying that we've won the game 1-0 by scoring a goal of their own. And off the crossbar from Mopai. And it's back to one all, Just as quickly as we'd went up 1-0. Smith threw the ball in to Gross. No one there to Mark Smith, so he drives in, swings it in, and Mopai just gets above the defender there, and it's one all after 15 minutes. I wonder if this is going to be one of those where there's lots of goals, or if it's just going to be one of those where you score two goals and then there's nothing for the rest of the game. Free kick for ourselves. Norwood swings it into the back post, and Sanchez holds on to it well, I must say. And he stood very still for a long time. He's going to launch this long, I imagine he is. Indeed, Egan wins the header, but Trossard gets on the end of it. Tries to switch it to Lallana, but Brian takes it, plays it forward, and Lamptey comes back. He's getting pressure on him as Sanchez clears the ball away. 
Brian takes it down. O'Connell, Ampadu and Norwood finds the ball with Osborne now. Back to Ampadu, acting in that kind of anchoring midfield role. Osborne plays it forward and McBurney's collected the ball. It was spilled by Sanchez and they're checking for offside. But surely if it came off the defender, it wouldn't matter if it was offside. But he is offside, apparently, and it's been disallowed. Okay. I mean, he was miles offside there, but I was of the opinion that if a defender made a deliberate touch on the ball, it then wasn't offside. Maybe I don't know the offside rule as much as I think I do, but there's another highlight here. It looks like it's going to go Brighton's way. Trossard down this left-hand side for them. Gets past his man. He goes past another one. He switches the play to Lalana. Will he hit this? No, he won't. He takes it down. Smith with it now. Finds Basuma. Finds Saicedo there, and Basuma again, and Smith with it now. Through toward Mopai, and it's a good save from Aaron Ramsdale in the goal there. That was an almost certain goal for Brighton, but a great save from Ramsdale prevents that. Ramsdale's actually now become the England number one in this game here. Uh, the last international break, he played all the games, and he's taken over from Jordan Pickford in the England goal. That's how well he's been playing for us here. At Sheffield United, he got himself an England call-up. Not bad at all for him. Not just a call-up to the squad, but actually getting the starting job in goal. And we've got to have time there at one all, A fairly equal game so far. But really, we need to be doing something in this second half to go and get the win against a team who are lower down the league like Brighton are. But Lamptey's coming down the right-hand side. He crosses the ball over. It's off the post and Ramsdale picks up the ball. And we're going to make a change. Osborne dead on his feet. We'll bring on Fosu Mensa and move Norwood to be playing the more advanced role. McBurney's not having a great game. We'll bring on Arp, who's not played for months, to be honest. After Brewster and McBurney came back, Arp's really not been playing. So we'll see how he does. And now he's back in the side. The other two midfielders that haven't been taken off are dead on their feet as well. They're really struggling. But we're not going to take them off yet. Ampadu finds Fosu Mensa has just come on. Back to Ampadu and Norwood. And he comes forward with the ball. Finds up. Back to Norwood. Through toward Brewster. Can he finish? What a goal from Ryan Brewster. And that puts us up 2-1. There's no offside there. He's just pacey in behind the defence. And gets us a second goal of the game. Norwood comes forward with it. Plays it to Arp, he gets the ball back. The centre-backs are further forward than the full-backs and Brewster takes advantage of that, gets in behind the centre-backs and just thrashes that ball in the top corner. And we're up 2-1. They say there's going to be a close call for offside here and it's not close at all. It's well-timed from Ryan Brewster. And it's 2-1 to Sheffield United here. We are going to make a tactical change. We'll take off Norwood and bring on Jack Rodwell, who I don't even know if he's played for us in the Premier League this year. Did you even know he was in the squad? After the introductory video, I don't think we've actually had him in the team. But he is in the squad, so he's going to come on for the last 10 minutes here. Normally not on the bench because we have simply better options in midfield, but he's playing today because of the midfield injuries. Fosu Mensa wins that ball back, and Ramsdale switches it to Balduck. He's got space if he wants to run into it, but he doesn't. He plays it to Ampadu instead, who finds Fosu Mensa, and now finds Balduck, and they've got space in behind the defence here. Arp, can he switch it over? No, he gets fouled. That's surely a penalty. The referee blows for a penalty, but they say it looks harsh, and VAR are going to look at it, are they? Yes. As always, they're checking the penalty. And it has been awarded. And who's going to take this penalty? I'm not sure. It looks like it's Ryan Brewster. It is indeed. Can he finish it? Oh, it's saved by Sanchez. Goodness me. And there's eight minutes to go. That would have won us the game, without doubt. But now we're going to have to see if we can hang on for the last five minutes of this game. Fosu Mensa wins the ball back. Finds Baldock on the right-hand side here. Frantic end to the game. Ampadu tries to get that ball, but Basuma wins it, and Trossard comes away with the ball now, and it's going to be a Brighton chance, and he switches it to Lalana. Lalana through to Basuma, who hits it, and they've equalised. That missed penalty from Brewster could prove costly, and it's two all now here with three minutes to go. Just simply not good enough from us in this game so far, but there's a free kick. Arp swings it in. It's headed away. Who's going to get onto it? It's Baldock. He drives on the right-hand side, finds Chambers. 
He swings the ball into the middle. It's headed away. Only as far as Brian, though. He's got men in the middle if he wants to use them. Brian puts in the middle. Brewster up! And we've scored! We've managed to get a win! After I was complaining that it wasn't good enough that we've been played, we've managed to get a last-minute winner. Fantastic! Hey, we shouldn't have had to worry about this. We should be up. We should have been up anyway because of the penalty, but we weren't. Brian swings this ball in. Brewster heads it. It's saved by the keeper, but it's spilled straight into the path of Arp, who's just there and tucks into the empty goal. And he's not played for ages, but he scored a goal here and we're up 3-2 now and there's five minutes of added time I'm just checking the clock up there and we've got to the end of added time we've won the game 3-2 that was closer than it should have been we should have scored that penalty and it would have been you know not in doubt oh thankfully for Ryan Brewster that missed penalty did not cost us that game the good goal from Arp in the last minute of the game gets us a win against Brighton I should have been more comfortable than that but you know what I don't care I'll take the win anyway that moves us up into seventh place Two points clear of Tottenham West Ham. One behind Wolves. And we play Wolves in our next game. So if we beat Wolves, we go above them into sixth place. If we lose to them, there's a chance Tottenham and West Ham could overtake us and we drop back out of Europe altogether. A draw, that makes things a little bit more interesting. But I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about two wins takes us to 60 points for the season, would put us in sixth position. That would be a successful end to a one-season challenge. We are now 10 games unbeaten at home, apparently, which is no mean feat. Very, very good for a wee side like us. And the board are delighted because we have achieved a top half finish, which was intended to be done by the end of the 2022-23 season. So if we look at the club vision, all the way down there was when that was meant to be done. We were only meant to avoid relegation this season. So we have become an established Premier Division team and we've recorded a top half finish all in this season, and they wanted that in three seasons' times. Not a bad effort for this one-season challenge. I would say that suggests this challenge has been a success. But I'm not going to rest on my laurels. I want European football. If I can get sick, that'd be even better. And that's what we're going to go for. So looking at the teams around us, we play uh, Wolves this weekend, obviously, but West Ham are away to Chelsea, and that game's happening just now. Hopefully Chelsea get the win, and it means West Ham don't you know, uh, get some points on us. Oh, I'm very, very nervous looking at this. We'll see how they do. Yes, Chelsea do beat West Ham. That means West Ham stay on 52 points. It means they can't overtake us here. Ideal, just what we're looking for. So we need to get ourselves a point against Wolves at least. I would really like the win though to put us ahead of them and that would mean that West Ham definitely can't overtake us because they'd be five points behind us. And it'd be one less team to worry about in uh, our little internal competition between us, if you get what I mean. Right, well, good news. Some players are back from injury. John Flett being one of them. Can't play the full game, but he can play most of it. So he definitely will be. And Ender Stevens as well is back from suspension. So he'll be getting straight back in to his left back position. So here is the team we're going to go for, for our penultimate game of the season. Perhaps the most important one against Wolves here, away at Wolves. We're good at home, not so good away, but hopefully we can get a result today. I wasn't meant to rhyme, but it did anyway. Ramsdale's going to be in goal. Ampadu is dropping back into centre-back where he's meant to be, now that we've got Flight back in midfield. So Ampadu alongside Chambers and O'Connell. Stevens and Baldock as our wing-backs. Fleck comes back in as a deep-line playmaker alongside Norwood and Osborne. And Brewster partnering McBurney up front. Moussey is not quite ready for this game, but he will be ready for the last one. So hopefully McBurney can get himself a goal here. You know, to, to show us why he deserves to be in this team. Whoever scores goals between Brewster and McBurney will get to partner Moussey in the last day of the season. So, no pressure, boys. And here we go. The game begins. Wolves wearing their orangey, goldy colour, whatever you want to call it. And us wearing our green today. Not a strip I particularly like looking at here on Football Manager. But nonetheless, we are wearing it. And Wolves have started the match the better of the teams. And they've got a corner. Podent swings it in and it's headed back out to him. He swings the ball back in and it's headed away. And Brewster comes away with the ball. And it's a two-on-two. Two. Can he thread through McBurney? He can indeed. Can McBurney score? No, he can't. Patricio saves the shot. And it's still nil-nil. Stevens with the throw on the left-hand side in toward Norwood. But it is cleared away. But Fleck collects the ball. Back to O'Connell. We recycle the play now, it looks like. O'Connell... Going down an, an alley there that was closing very quickly. Thanks to the high press from Wolves. But the ball switched out to Baldock and Osborne. 
And Baldock's got the ball back into Osborne now. He threads it through for Baldock and he's in behind the defence here. Will he go for himself? He will. What a goal. Baldock, who scored no goals at all at the start of this season. In the last two episodes, this one and the last one, has become a goal-scoring machine on that right-hand side. And this is his third in the last handful of games. Drives forward into the box and thrashes it across the keeper. And we're up 1-0 thanks to that goal from Baldock there out on the right-hand side. And that puts us up into sixth position. Sorry, my doorbell went there just as I was celebrating that goal. That was a wonderful, wonderful effort from Baldock there. And... The ball is uh, back in play here with Norwood. It's a three-on-three three if he wants to make advantage of it. Norwood threads through somebody, does he? He goes by himself. He switches it into McBurney. He heads it over the bar. Oh, not a good effort from McBurney there. But we do go in. Half time, it's 1-0. Well, early on in the second half, there is a highlight here. Stevens throws it into Brewster. Can he get this ball in the box? Maybe. He finds Norwood, who switches it in. McBurney, another header over the bar. Not great play from McBurney so far. It looks like Brewster's going to get that position alongside Moosey if it keeps up like this. And William Jose with the ball finds Dendonker and he gets the ball back. And what's he going to do? Play it to Ruben Neves and Dendonker. He switches it toward Adama Traore, but Stevens intercepts and Norwood collects the ball into Osborne and Fleck and they recycle the play. Brewster with it, finds Stevens, who's advancing down that left-hand side. Can he get the ball in? No, he can't. He tried, but he didn't beat the first man. And now O'Connell comes away with it. And Fleck, he doesn't want to lose the ball here. There'll be a big breakaway for Wolves. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Podence plays it through toward Raul, and Raul gets the ball. And it's a good save from Ramsdale, keeping us in this game. I know it sounds silly, seems we're ahead, but keeping us in this game. And Podence swings the ball in, Ampadu clears it, and Brewster gets in the end of it. This is going to be a chance for us. That's a blatant foul from Adama Traore. And somehow, he's not being yellow-carded. And Brewster picked up an injury from that, so Arp's going to have to come on for Brewster there. I will swap McBurney to his preferred pressing forward role. And Norwood, Norwood's worked very hard. He's very tired, so he's going to come off and we'll bring on Fosu Mensa for him. Cody with a challenge there, a yellow card for him. And there's 20 minutes to go in this game and we still lead 1-0. I'm going to encourage the entire team, get their wee faces smiling and Podent swings in a corner. And that's headed over the bar by Bolly. 15 minutes, we're just counting down the time to hang on here before we play this last game of the season against Burnley, which we should hopefully win. This is the tough one. Fleck swings in the free kick. Ampadu heads it. O'Connell is cleared by Podence. And Stevens gets on it. Back to Fleck. Can the ball come back in the box? He drives on the left-hand side, swings it in. It's headed away by Cody. And Willian Jose clears the ball away. Five minutes to go. This will be a fantastic 1-0 victory away from home if we can hold on. Osborne loses the ball, but Bogle swings it in. And Patricio leaps and grabs onto the ball. And now he'll play this ball long down the left-hand side. And Podence is in behind the defence here. He's coming one-on-one -on -one with Ramsdale. Good save from Ramsdale. It's maybe not going to be Wolves' day if it keeps up like this. Five minutes added time. The ball swung in. What a save from Aaron Ramsdale in the goal. William Jose surely should have scored a headed finish from that close, but he didn't. And the time's ticked away here, and we've held on to a 1-0 victory, which means we overtake Wolves in the league table, and we're currently in sixth. Unbelievable for us here at Sheffield United. No one played that well. Rian Brewster did okay. Baldock did well scoring his goal, but really it was the defence that did everything. They held on. They held on so, so well, and we got that 1-0 win. Ryan Brewster got injured in that game. He's out for six to eight days. We'll see if he manages to come back for the last game of the season. We had him injured for so much of the season. We really don't want him to be injured for the last game, but we'll see what happens. This could be very exciting indeed. We still have to see what goes on with the Tottenham game. When do Tottenham play? They play on Wednesday against Liverpool. And if they don't win that game, then we are guaranteed... European football. If they do win it, then we still have a battle for European football, but I tell you what, never mind European football. Let's get sixth and we get in the Europa League proper. Never mind the Euro, the Europa League, or the Conference League, or whatever the second one is. We get in the Europa League proper if we do indeed finish sixth. That would be outstanding. 60 points would be no mean feat for a Sheffield United side like this. I think that would be a successful one season challenge. I'm not sure what you guys think in the comments below, but let's advance through, see how Tottenham do against Liverpool and then see our last game against already relegated Burnley. 
Right, so we have reached Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, this is the time that uh, Tottenham are playing up against Liverpool. If Tottenham do not win, then we are guaranteed a top seven finish, guaranteed European football. And let's see what the result is. They lost to Liverpool, so we have guaranteed ourselves top seven, which means we've guaranteed European football. But you know what? That was initially the challenge after we changed it from top 10 to Europe, but we want to get top six. Europa League, never mind the Conference League, the actual Europa League, and that means we need to win this last game against already relegated Burnley. Let's see if we do. And there you go, you can see that piece of news. We've already qualified for the Euro Cup 2, which is the Conference League, but we have to say we are in contention to get the Europa League instead, and that is what we're going to be trying to do. I tell you what, I'm very, very excited for this last game. What a one-season challenge this has been. I think it's safe to say we've done a lot better than what Sheffield United have done in real life. No doubt about that. Last place, miles off the bottom of the table, Sheffield United were. But instead, we've managed to get them into Europe into that Europa League spot at the moment. It might be the Conference League, but certainly playing in Europe. And that's, I would say, a success. If anybody wants to do this challenge, it only takes one season. It doesn't take that long if you're doing it by yourself. Probably take even less time than it did for me because you won't be recording it. Then you know what? Try it. See how you get on. It's interesting doing these one season things. You don't have to kind of be as invested in it as you as you make for some of your other saves on Football Manager. And it, it gives a little bit of a challenge. You get to try playing in different leagues, different teams. You'll see what's coming up. I've got different plans, different scenarios you're in. I think it's it's been very, very interesting, very enjoyable so far. I'll be even more enjoyable should we beat Burnley to go and finish in sixth place. Looking at the teams around us, Tottenham play against Man United, so I don't imagine Tottenham would uh, would have got up to us anyway. Wolves are playing Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, remember, were the team up in seventh for a long time, and then they dropped off. So you never know, Wolves might not win that, but they're the only one we have to worry about. See how they do against Crystal Palace. If Wolves don't win, doesn't matter what we do. Doesn't matter what we do. If Wolves don't win, we'll come sixth anyway. But we'd like to finish with a win so we can get onto 60 points. Be a nice finish to the season. So here we are. Some of our players have returned from injury. Not quite Sander Berg. He's still out for four weeks. Not quite Billy Sharp, unfortunately. He's still out for up to three weeks. But Musi is back, as is Lundstrom. So they are back in the team for this last game. And we're going to play with this team. Ramsdale in goal. Ampadu has been so vital for us in defence alongside Chambers. Chambers has been playing really well. I think that was certainly the signing of the series for us. And Connell, the other defender. Baldock and Stevens on the wing back positions. Norwood alongside Lundstrom and Fleck. Almost a full strength midfield, but no Berg, unfortunately. And Brewster alongside Musi up front. Let's get into it. Let's get a win. And the teams walk out there. Burnley in their claret and blue. As in our red and white stripes. And they're playing 4-4-1-1. It would appear Burnley are. Ah, hopefully we can take advantage of that. If they advance their winger slightly too far. We'll have a bit of an overload. And we get our wing backs up there. That's the plan. It has been all season. And it works most of the time. And the first highlight of the game, Stevens throws the ball in and it comes all the way back to Chris Wood here. And what's he going to do for Burnley? He plays it back to Matt Lawton and the ball's forward toward Gaston Ramirez and McNeil with it drives in field across the midfield of us and keeps going. He goes and hits it and that's not a good shot. Maybe that's why Burnley are relegated if, uh, if that's the way that they're shooting. I'm going to ignore the injury that's happened to Moussey. It definitely hasn't happened. Ignore, ignore. We, we don't want to look at it. We'll pretend it's not happened. He has picked up a sore knee, apparently, but we'll keep him on, at least for the rest of this first half, which has ended with a bit of a whimper, to be honest. Not the best performance we've ever had. It might be one of these games, again, where there's not really any highlights, and that would be a disappointing way to end the season. It certainly would. Here's the first highlight for us. It looks like Flake swings it in and O'Connell heads that and that's just wide the goal. One effort from him. But still nil nil. And now Moussey is properly injured with his knee injury. So on comes Ollie McBurney up front. Let's see if he can score us some goals. And John Lundstrom's got himself a yellow. So we'll bring on Ben Osborne for him and move John Fleck out to the box to box roll. 
half an hour to go and we'll see what happens here. Gaston Ramirez finds Robbie Brady and Taylor has the ball now. What's he going to do? He comes in field, finds Cork, who's sitting very deep, plays out to Lotan on the right-hand side. He goes down the line. He gets past the wing back. He plays it into the middle. Lastly, Westwood, his first goal of the season. What a nice time for us to let somebody score their first goal of the season when they're playing against us and we need to try to win the game to get in sixth place. How very, very nice of us. Burnley up 1-0 and simply put, that's not good enough from us. Brewster swings in this free kick and O'Connell had his second headed chance. It's just wide of the goal. I must say, I am not impressed with us here and Wolves are now ahead in their game so they go above us, which means we're going to drop out of the Europa League spaces. Disappointing indeed, but Flett's got the ball. Can we get two late goals to turn us around? Norwood finds McBurney, back to Norwood and McBurney again and Norwood and Fleck. He plays the ball forward to McBurney who hits it's a good save from Nick Pope and there's only 10 minutes to go and we are still in 7th place. Disappointing indeed if this is the way that we end the season. Four minutes added time and it is going to be the way. What a way to end this series. How disappointing that would be. There is a late highlight. Could it be a goal for us? Stevens down the left hand side. Drives down the line. Will he swing the ball in the middle? What's he going to do in toward Brewster? Headed away. Stevens gets the ball back. He swings it in a second time and Pope holds on to it. And that's going to be it. There's not going to be a goal for us here. And we are going to drop out of the Europa League places on the last day by losing to a team who are already relegated. What a ridiculous turn of events here. And that's even more ridiculous. We've scored a goal, but it is flagged for offside. And I don't imagine... The VAR is going to turn this over the other way. Yeah, he calls it back for offside. And we are losing 1-0. And we have lost 1-0. And Wolves have overtaken us on the last day of the season to get into that Europa League place. What a way to end the season with me being angry at them for how poorly they played. See their Wolves get a 2-0 victory over Crystal Palace in the end. And we miss out on the Europa League by one point. However we do get ourselves into Europe in seventh place in the Conference League and I think that is a success in itself. What a way to finish this one season challenge. The ups and downs of the whole season just shown in this last episode there, I think. In the end, a successful one season challenge. We were aiming to avoid relegation right at the start and that's exactly what we've done. We've done it by 26 points. Very successful indeed. We then thought, let's try and get top 10. And we've done that successfully. And then we tried to get in Europe, and that's exactly what we've done. We didn't quite get Europa League. It's just the Conference League. But you know what? I'm proud of those boys. Maybe if I was the manager in real life, they wouldn't have been relegated. Looking back right to the start of the season where we had wins against Man City in our second league match in charge. Disappointingly knocked out by West Brom in the Carabao Cup. We went through some very weird spells where we lost a few games in a row, then won, then lost a lot, then won. We beat Man United there in December as well before having a good run going into the start at uh, the end of December and start of January before losing to Burnley, who we've lost to twice now this season. Not both in the league. One of them was in the FA Cup, so we got knocked out in the fourth round of the FA Cup. We had a, a bit of a poor end to January before a fairly successful February, including a draw against Man City. A good march. We then beat Liverpool as well in April. And we came through here and lost to Burnley on the last day of the season. And that's very disappointing to end the league like that. It means that we do qualify for the Conference League, as I said, but not quite the Europa League. Looking at the teams up above us, we had a win against Man United. They only lost to three teams all year. Man City, ourselves and West Ham, weirdly. We also took points off Man City. We beat Man City. We also drew with Man City as well. And we beat Liverpool as well. I tell you what, we beat some of those big sides. But unfortunately, we could not beat Burnley on the last day of the season to get that Europa League place. Disappointed indeed for that. Moussey had a very successful season, getting himself 21 league goals, finishing second in that goal-scoring chart. And looking at the rest of the squad, there's some very good average rating there, mainly from Moussey and Brewster and McBurney. Those three strikers played particularly well throughout the course of the season. Brewster and McBurney obviously missing large parts of the season because of injury, but Moussey really was our man throughout that whole season, getting 24 goals in all competitions. Norwood, Lundstrom and Berg were a really important midfield part as well, with Fleck 
ably deputising in several occasions. And Chambers was a very good signing at the back alongside Ethan Ampadu. Maybe Fosu Mensa and Hop weren't the best signings, but they, uh, they they played their part, Arp especially when we had that injury crisis up front in the middle portion of the season. He was fairly good there, got six goals on the season. And Fosu Mensa's versatility was good off the bench as well. But all in all, I think a very successful season for these boys here at Sheffield United. Finishing seventh, I would say that was a successful one-season challenge. If you would like to try this one-season challenge yourself, try it. Just load up a game, play Sheffield United, play for a year and see how you get on. Let me know how you got on if you try that. In the comments below, it'd be very interesting to see if any of you can do better than I can. It's very tough on such a tight budget. I couldn't really sign anybody. Hence, you saw no real transfers brought in. It was really just using the squad that was already there with a couple of loans and The only one that offered real consistent uh, starting talent for us was Callum Chambers but apart from that, that was just the team that Sheffield United had, I could get them into 7th, unfortunately they couldn't do that in real life and they finished in 20th positions, as I say try it out for yourself, let me know how you get on tell me in the comments if you think you can do better than I mean and give me some proof, show me how you did better, tell me how you got on if you like this sort of thing good because it's continuing on, not with Sheffield United, we've finished this one season challenge. We've played one season, that was the challenge. We're going to move on next week to a different team, somewhere else in the land of football, and you'll find out who that is on Monday. And if you've got any ideas for other teams we could do a one season challenge with, whether it be a team fighting relegation who actually got relegated, and maybe we could try and save them, like we did with Sheffield United here, or a team who maybe should compete for Europe who did, not a team who should have won the title who didn't, then let me know what you think I should do, what teams you think I should do a one season challenge with. I think I'm pretty much uh, certain I'm going to be doing a few of these. It's very, very enjoyable indeed, and gets you kind of looking at different bits of Football Manager. Some leagues I might not have played in had I just been playing my one long-term save like the Killy Boys had been for, uh, for all these weeks and months so far throughout this game cycle, so... So yeah, let me know any more ideas you have in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this, please do leave a like on this video. Leave a like on all the videos in the series. Go back and like them all if you've not already. I would really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. If you enjoyed this series, as I say, there's more coming. If you really want to go and watch something, you can go and watch the Kelly Boys. The first few episodes might be a bit dodgy. It was my first ever series on Football Manager on YouTube at all, actually. But there's 145 episodes. If you're bored, you can go and watch them all back to back. They're in a handy little playlist for you to go and watch if you want to go and watch that too. But subscribe for more Football Manager content Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. And until the next one, where we're going to be doing something different, we'll see you then.